Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining for today's tourism update. I am Lisa Lord. We seem to have had some technical issues earlier. They're now sorted. Now, I want to say good morning to everyone at the head table. We have the Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Senator the Honorable Lisa Cummins, the Chair of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Rene Coppin, Chair of the Intimate Hotels of Barbados, Mahmoud Patel, Chair of the Sun Group Inc., Bernie Weatherhead. We also have other stakeholders in the audience and members of the media. And Minister Cummins will give an announcement on that update. Thank you very much, Lisa. I am very happy to be here this morning with the colleagues from the industry. We have with us, I'm going to start to my left, uh, the chairman of the we call them the Intimate Hotels Group of Barbados, and they represent the small uh, hotels group in Barbados, and they have become an important partner, certainly in this last period of time where they have become a formal member of the BTMI board. We're very happy to have them alongside us. We have to my right the chairman of the Barbados Hotel and Association, which represents a combination of large hotels, villas, as well as small properties, and that also includes direct tourism services, including uh, many of our attractions and experiences. And then to my far right, no stranger to most, uh, Mr. Bernie Weatherhead. He is one of our local owners. He is a Barbadian owner of a, of a number of hotel properties. And so we have the combination of policy as well as the promotion. Here also with us in the room, we have our various representatives of the agencies at the management level. And so we're all here together really for the purpose of sharing with Barbados uh, what is going to be offered to Barbadians by way of a dedicated and a coherent staycation package for the summer. And, and really was the context for this. Uh, I don't think anybody needs me to tell them what the experiences have been over the last few years, certainly in tourism, but I don't want to make this about tourism alone, but certainly for Barbadians as people. It has been a difficult two and a half years. Many people couldn't wait to travel again. Many people couldn't wait to be outside again. And right now we are in the outside season. This is crop over. Everybody's happy to be outside. And so we are also happy to be sharing it in that breathing, I, that's what I would describe it as, a breathing opportunity for Barbadians. And so on that basis, here in the tourism sector with the partners that I have just introduced you to, we are going to be creating those opportunities, especially in the summer for crop over and for the summer period generally, especially when kids are home, graduation season is wrapping up, for Barbadians to become those domestic tourists, to enjoy the staycations that have historically always existed, but perhaps maybe this year even more important than they were before. And so together with the various associations that I have just introduced to you, we will be sharing the participating properties who will be engaging in the staycations package that we're launching today. And we will be sharing the specifics of what those packages will contain. And I don't want to steal the thunder of the various stakeholder partners who represent the various properties. So I'm going to go perhaps quickly over to the chairman of the BHGA. And I'm going to ask Renee if you can please share a little bit about what the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association is going to be putting forward so that Barbadians are excited about coming into properties again. Renee. So we at the BHG are really delighted to be here. Good morning, Minister and mm -hmm. colleagues and members of the press and ladies and gentlemen. And we're delight delighted to be here this morning as part of the ongoing thrust to build and develop tourism. And for those of you who have not heard me say this before, I believe that Barbados tourism is special. I admit my bias, but what we offer here is unique, not just in the Caribbean, but in the world. And Barbados as a destination belongs to us all. It's an island that embraces you from shore to shore with its culture, its landscapes, its food, its heritage, and most importantly, its people. Barbados' tourism is not about creating spaces for people to enjoy. It's about us inviting them to enjoy our spaces, to live as we do, to eat as we do, to commune as we do, and to laugh as we do. In this light, we're happy to be part of this Crop Over Weekend special as we bring awareness to the work of our members in offering accommodation, attractions, dining, and activities to Barbadians. I'm sure you'll all remember that the term and concept of staycations emerged during the 2008 financial crisis. And that was one of many crises that this industry has had to survive. At that time, travel was a discretionary spend that many could not afford. And for tourism dependent economies, that meant that while our traditional source markets were staying at home, so too were our locals and they needed to find relaxation and respite. Even though the term became popular at that time, the concept is definitely not new to Barbadians. Remember that from earliest days, the island had the reputation for, and I'm quoting from our book, Island in the Sun, the finest climate and healthiest environment of all the British West Indian islands. From early on, Barbadians were known as graduates in the science of hospitality, masters in the art of entertaining, genial and sociable by instinct, self-possessed, courteous and polite. 
I feel that describes us all. This naturally hospitable people and climate has long been one that we as Barbadians have sought to enjoy from rental of beach houses to hotel accommodation. And during COVID, Barbadians certainly took advantage of enjoying their island home and spending time in resorts and other vacation type rentals from coast to coast of the island and everything in between. So for many Barbadians, this was nothing new. However, for others, it was their first time sampling in what we usually label our tourism product. And our members were delighted to continue to build and expand our staycation experiences and markets. So Ecclesiastes speaks to what has been will be again, what has been done will be done again, and that there's nothing new under the sun. So this program is not new, but it's definitely one which we're excited to extend in partnership with the BTMI and our Ministry of Tourism. Tourism is evolving and revolving, and I believe that Barbados has never been better suited to the revolution. The major trends in tourism right now are seen to be sustainable tourism, which is driven by the awareness that we are destroying our very climate that we rely on to live in. And people have never been more conscious of the need not only to reduce their footprint, but to have a positive long-term impact on the communities that they visit. This is a model on which Barbados' tourism has always been built as we are simply too small and our society is too integrated to see tourism as a separate thing from us. We know that when tourists come to the island, they traverse it, they live with us and among us, and for us this is not a new trend or a fad, but simply the way that we must exist. Barbados is also well placed to explore other major trends in the post-COVID world, such as food tourism. We're an island with over 100, sorry, 400 restaurants, and that does not include the smaller operators. This links back integrally to our agricultural sector and how we create locally grown food for both locals and visitors to enjoy. The other emerging trend is experiential or immersion tourism. And this too is not new to us. People have always come here and immersed themselves in this island. In my hotel, I learned more about Barbados from my long stay repeats than many locals could ever tell me. They relocate here in winter and as retirees, they're able to meaningfully engage with our history, our culture, our people, our food and our environment. The other new drive is towards an area which truly represents the genesis of Barbados tourism, and that's wellness tourism. COVID created massive emotional, psychological, and financial pressures on people. The focus for many, therefore, has shifted to their health and wellness. And the success of our welcome stamp was a signal to the importance of this growing niche. And I'm happy that we are going to be extending that. Very excited about that. People want to lead more balanced lives, enjoying beautiful spaces with the people that they love. And we're better to do so than in Barbados. So even as today was ostensibly to discuss our upcoming staycation crop over special, the bigger goal is for us to continue the discussion on how we rebuild Barbados tourism better as we go forward. We're excited to join with our partners in the Ministry of Tourism and the BTMI in this initiative, and we're even more excited to be at this critical juncture in this industry, working as Barbadians to rebuild not just this industry, but this country. We hope that many of you will continue to come out and enjoy the staycation offers, as you have been for many years, and certainly in the last two and a half. And so we are really very pleased to announce our partners. And this is a growing list, um, but I want to welcome, first of all, our partner from Book Barbados, who is our official booking channel sorry, for this initiative. Um, Jose Brown, thank you for joining us. Book Barbados um, is where all of these offers will be available, as well as many Barbadians obviously book directly with the hotels themselves. So the BHTA members we have on board right now are Dulo Apartments, Dover Beach, Golden Sands, Naniki Barbados, Ross Trevor Hotel, Sorry, I'll start over. I do have a tendency to speak quickly. Adulo Apartments, Dover Beach, Golden Sands, Naniki Barbados, Ross Trevor Hotel, Atlantis Historic Inn, Little Good Harbor, Pirates Inn, Infinity on the Beach, Butterfly Beach Hotel, Savannah Beach Club Hotel and Spa, Ocean 15 Apartment Hotel, Round Rock Apartments on Sea, and Southern Palms Beach Club. Mahmoud, would you like me to announce the IHB or would you like to have that offer? No, you, you can go ahead with that. Um, actually, in a way, you stole my thunder because uh, we, we kind of um, share the same idea of local tourism. I may take it over from you then. You I'm certainly, you sorry, certainly sorry, may. Sorry. Thank you very much, <laughs> sir. Uh, um, we share very similar thought here. patterns. Um, what, what, what I'd like to say, first of all, the small hotels in Barbados just didn't start yesterday. We've been around since the 1800s. Barbados tourism is actually started on small four-room hotels. A lot of the small hotels initially were on the southeast coast of Barbados. So the small hotels have always been engaged in local, local let's, let's say local visitors or the local uh, us agents. Um, and, you know, 
we have something called vacation. That's, that's an AHB um, concept where you can spend not a staycation or a vacation, but you can do it for a day. Um, and, and so we welcome this initiative to engage with local tourism. In fact, I would, I would suggest that we are, AHB are going to extend it past the crop over weekend. We can probably try to even maybe do it longer than, than um, maybe all of August as well. Um, you know, one day free, two days, you pay for two days, one day free, and then there will be additional programs that we will offer in terms of what we call vacation and stay, and weekend packages and so on. But I also want to say that this is just a start. I think we also need to include uh, what Rene would have mentioned, experiential tourism. A lot of Barbados don't know the experiences of what people call tourist attractions. We need to call these local attractions as well. Right? So the Harrison's Cave, the Cocoa Hill, the Peg Farm, and there's a list of them, a lot, um, that we should build into um, our staycation packages as well. Local tourism is becoming a big, big plank post-COVID. People are recognizing the importance of the home dollar, and I think the initiative by the Prime Minister, BTMI, Ministry of Tourism, BHDA, and IHB, to start a concentrated narrative to develop this sector of our industry, which is circular, it's local, and it's sustainable, mm -hmm. is more than welcome. And, and over time, we hope to build it out that it will include, and again, I think mentioned this, and, and the minister as well, restaurants, attractions, and hotels to create a holistic experience for us all to enjoy Barbados. It is a very beautiful island, and we have so many different types of experiences. For instance, one of our members in IHB actually makes water, <coughs> you know, produces water. Mm -hmm. That's eco, uh, eco lodge, right? And and some of us are farmers as well. So our tourism idea, or our tourism of idea, is evolving as well to become more sustainable, to link with agriculture, to link with energy, to link with food security. And I think hopefully this is the start of a long rollout that creates a strong linkage with local, sustainable and community and rural driven tourism. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Patel. Uh, Mr. Weatherhead, you now speak about the importance of these specials as a veteran tourism stakeholder. Well, I, I certainly agree with everything that Mahmoud has said and, and the president of the Hotel Association. I think it's important to make the point that we, we are trying to do an extra special offer at this time. Uh, we have a war going on. We have every, everything that is negative in the world going on. Um, Heathrow Airport is asking airlines not to book any more trips, gives them a two month leeway. So we are faced with a lot of, lot of negatives and it's, it, it brings the focus now very much to home. I can say I have not left Barbados on a vacation for the last six years. Uh, and and um, I certainly have taken time off, uh, um, so I've spent it here in Barbados. But um, we want to try to get uh, Barbadians to really appreciate the, the facilities of the island. And we have a good cross-section of facilities, small hotel, big hotel, mm -hmm. um, right across the, the, uh, the actual cost spectrum. And I think that um, it, it's, I'm gonna make an offer here today. I hope the president of the Hotel Association doesn't kill me going through the door. <laughs> but I, I think that one of the people, we are appealing to all Barbadians, but we are especially appealing to the press and the people in the PR business um, who is actually at the podium and thing right now. So because if you all, if you all, um, if you all get the opportunity to enjoy the, the, uh, the facilities, you'll be able to put that word out. And you know, you take things for granted because we have been doing, mm -hmm. We have been doing staycations, but 
when we go up in occupancies from overseas, those occupancies are booked far in advance. So we then have to cut down staycations. So it goes and comes and you lose track of it. Um, but I think this press conference today is very much to focus on it and let's try to get it done because every, everywhere we look, there are challenges for the airlines and we need to be able to do something here to make uh, things happen. And education out of these trips. Mm -hmm. Educate the average Barbadian that can answer on TripAdvisor, mm -hmm. can go on to TripAdvisor and say to somebody who is asking, well, should I come to Barbados for this? Should I go to a specific hotel? Let that person, let, let Barbadians in general jump online and say, greatest place because I stayed there last week or last month and this sort of thing. My staff, funny enough, every day nearly I hear a staff member telling me, this, well, I, I spend a lovely staycation, so I get very excited. But she they didn't stay at my hotel. <laughs> um, she went and spent my money <laughs> in another hotel. She worked for so, it. <laughs> But the thing is that I think we are excited about all these specials that we're going to do and we want to get you all excited, we want to get Barbadians excited. A Barbadian vacation to a Barbadian, a Barbados vacation to a Barbadian is the cheapest vacation you can get anywhere in the world mm -hmm. if you're going to go outside. Because you've got airfares and all sorts of things and in the world you're in, you don't know if you can get back, so you might lose your job. Uh, so I can only appeal to Barbados, appeal to the press that support us in this. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough summer, and we know not what will happen even in this winter. The, the, the hotels are showing good occupancy so far in the winter. Um, and we expect them to run a very, very positive hotels, but you have a war going on, you have all these things going on, and, um, and we are sort of like biting our fingernails to, to know, but we're not going to look back. We have big investments in the, in the country. We believe in the country, so we are going to work hard at doing this. Thank you very much, Mr. Bellhead. Thank Minister, you. closing comments are yours. Thank you. I, I really want to express appreciation to, to Bernie, of course, Rene and, and Mahmoud, but I, I want to be able to just end the press conference where Bernie ended off. You know, we have something special here, something that is ours. And I think Rene and Mahmoud talked about the history of staycations. We've always had staycations, and I want to deal frontally with the false narrative that has been put out there, and it is a false narrative, and we just have to be careful that we believe the things that our eyes can see and not necessarily some of the things that are there. Barbados has always had staycations. We have always had staycations, especially in the summer months. The hotels have always put this on, and this has always been a long-standing partnership with the hotel industry and locals and Barbadians as an investment in the industry. And I wanna make sure that we understand that our industry must continue to welcome locals because that is the mainstay on which our industry is based. And so I want to also globalize this a little bit. When we were in the middle of COVID, these are some of the realities that we dealt with. You had countries like Canada, for example, that launched a massive domestic campaign, domestic tourism campaign, encouraging their nationals to experience what Canada had to offer. And you saw a lot happening during that period. In the recently concluded July 4th weekend in the US, there was a huge drive campaign because there were so many issues with domestic air travel in the United States. And so people were driving and they were experiencing one state that they didn't live in and they had never gone to. And they too were experiencing all that they had to offer. Barbados has something special that Renee has just described. We've always had something special. Let us also take the opportunity to reinvest in committing 
to Barbados, to Team Barbados, Team Tourism, Destination Barbados, but experiencing the things that we have first. A few weeks ago, for example, Harsons Cave reopened, I believe it was on the 17th of June, and some of you were there with me a few weeks before that, but then we went zip lining. We had a fam trip down from New York and from the U all across the US, and they came down and they had a phenomenal time. I actually saw on Instagram this week uh, the couple that travels, and they had a story featuring Barbados and their experiences here, encouraging people to come here. How many of us live overseas for years and come back home and we say, we can't, go to, we can't wait to go to the beach, we can't wait to do this, and then we don't because we take it for granted. We've had a difficult time. It's been a rough time. It's a rough time internationally. It's a rough time regionally. We know that regional travel is not where we would want it to be with the absence of Liat. But we have what is ours here that we are in full control of. And I want to just encourage Barbadians to take full advantage of the specials that are going to be offered. We have to be able to focus on the specifics of the special. And I was going to. Um, close on just recapping the specifics of what we're here to announce today so everybody is able to zoom in on the specific messaging of today's press conference. Today we are here to share about the staycation packages being offered by the respective properties. That is our conversation today. We're here to talk about the various properties that are on site. Book Barbados is there and then you can go online and you can see all of the available hotels. There are 16 partners and as the chairman of the BHDA said, that list is growing. IHB has a growing list and Bernie has just offered a, a, a particular special for the media so you can come and tell everybody. <laughs> I just put Bernie under pressure. <laughs> but. I really just want to encourage you. You're paying for two nights, as Mahmoud said, getting one free. And if you want to have four nights, and then you're able to pay, you get the one night, you put the combinations that work best for you, your friends, your families, your groups. But this is that moment, especially over crop over. Go and have a fantastic time at all the parties over the weekend. Have a fantastic time at Kaduma next weekend. But come back home and take a break from cooking, feeding the dogs, all of that kind of stuff. Make sure somebody's at home feeding the dogs. Um, have to say that as a dog lover in the room. But um, <laughs> come and stay in our hotels. And from BTMI, I am going to make sure that we are also working and continuing to work with all of our attractions to have the packages along with the hotels, with the actual attractions as well, so that Barbadians over the course of the summer get outside, enjoy what the tourism, domestic tourism product has to offer, and be able to do so at a price that fits your pocket, your pocket, your pocket. If it's luxury, if it's a villa, if it's a small hotel, if you want to have the intimacy of some of the smaller product, do that. But we want to make sure that we are here to support that domestic tourism thrust, and we're really happy to have the support of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, the Intimate House Hotels Group, and Bernie and his specific son group partners to be able to be alongside with us. And I really want to encourage all of you to get the message out there that Barbados is home for us and the holiday season is officially open for summer. Just come. Just come. Join us and come. Thank you very much, Minister. That was the Minister of Tourism and International Transport, Senator the Honorable Lisa Cummins. Let me also thank the Chair of the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, Ms. Renee Coppin, Chair of the Intimate Hotels of Barbados, Mr. Mahmoud Patel, Chair of the Sun Group Inc., Mr. Bernie Weatherhead, other tourism stakeholders here in attendance, and members of the media. Do have yourself a fantastic Friday. Awesome.